Hello, my Jason. I always have a server for episode 41, 42, and 43 of Mobile Suit Garma Iron Blood Orphans. Those episodes are Natural for a Human, Sentiments, and Revealed Intentions. And so we have the aftermath of the um, turbines, uh, at least the leaders of turbines, uh, being split apart with Naze's funeral, Jastly being a dick uh, for the most part, talking about Naze uh, for trusting women to uh, help his battles. Obviously, Jastly is a uh, a hole and should be killed off. And he eventually was in episode 42 by Takadon because uh, during episode 41, we have the um, at least the turbines girls, at least the leaders of them, Ozzy, Laughter. They were talking about their futures and what they will do next, whether they'll help out Tewa's and uh, McMurdo and his group since they are still sort of affiliated with him even though Naze is, uh, was killed off and the leader of Turbines is killed off. He's given them the option you know definitely he is respecting Naze's wishes of helping these girls out if they need help he'll always be there to help them so very nice there for McMurdo a very nice guy in general who has very um, moments where he can be uh, cynical when he wants to be but definitely very caring towards people who are loyal to him very interesting uh, insight towards him because he talks about this tech done and episode 42 as well where he sees them as a very useless organization which is pretty understandable because he doesn't, they don't really do any jobs for him for the most part they, we see some things here and there but still this would look like they do um, the same types of jobs as Naze did uh, for him for Tay was uh, but he does see them as very loyal and definitely loyalty is very key and we see those relationships uh, really come to fruition when characters are very loyal to each other they are rewarded or sometimes their loyalty is blinded uh, from the true intentions of characters Characters like how Gaelio was betrayed by um, uh, M McGillis due to their loyalty, at least his loyalty towards him, because he felt like they were actually friends, but however, that was not the case since McGillis had other intentions in mind. But as the death flags were being put up for Laughter and Akihiro, especially with their relationship growing even closer and closer, uh, they had like a drink together, they shared. Uh, so most even shared a hug as well. Laughter was eventually killed off one, by one of Jasley's men uh, trying to send a message. And definitely Jasley, um was trying to corner Takedon so that Eok could come in and go in for the kill. And that's when Takedon will obviously uh, launch a revenge uh, tactic, uh, which would, you know, definitely compromise them. They would be you know, separated from Tewa's. They knew that uh, from the get-go, but definitely Akihiro uh, wanted revenge for Laughter. Everyone else did as well because they shared a very strong connection towards Turbines, and Laughter was definitely part of that as well because she's definitely a teacher towards many of the younger uh, characters like Rai and uh, the other younger characters who are learning how to use mobile suits and really get their training together. And so the revenge plan uh, started up in episode 42, where where definitely Takedon uh, was the uh, main uh, focus uh, this episode in terms of their uh, sort of overwhelming power against Jastly and his crew because Eok was not part of the battle. Uh, they were betrayed as well because the lack of loyalty that Jastly showed towards Tay was was um, being uh, yes, it was it did come to fruition basically because. Uh, to McMurdo called off Eok to having a deal done with Rostel. You know, everything would be sort of brushed off to the side. No one would get in trouble. No one's beefing uh, within, within each other with uh, Gallahorn and Tewas. And so that's why Jastly is left alone to where Mika can't kill him off uh, before Chastly can try to, you know, talk his way out of the situation. And at the end of that episode, uh, McGillis starts off his coup in within Ta uh, Gallahorn and Takedon will be uh, part of that coup as well. And even Kudelia is left out of the situation as well. Very a little bit heartbroken, it seems like, you know, she has a person that she cares about within uh, Takedon, and she felt she was part of the family. I thought so, too. I thought she was part of the family. Uh, whenever uh, Orga talks about family, it seems like uh, Kudeli would be involved in that as well. They've been through a thick and thin, been through a lot of situations together. You would think she'd be part of their uh, group, but I guess he's trying to protect her in some sort of ways, trying to make her business legitimate, rather than just um, associate themselves with a terrorist or a group, a pseudo-terrorist or a group, in some sort of way a group that's going against the government uh, within Galahor and in this coup attempt. Uh, we have uh, Mika taking care of uh, McGillis outside of the Seven Stars organization, taking care of any mobile suits that get in his way, where his big plan is to reignite Agnika Kaeru, a figure of the hero of Galahorn. He talks about him a bunch of times, and it turns out that uh, his spirit was is within this Gundam frame by Bale. Uh, so that's basically the intention 
tensions that he's going through. He finds a secret room where this Gundam frame is, and definitely uh, Vidar uh, encounters him, reveals himself to Gaelio. No surprise there, but definitely this is what he's been waiting for. He's been waiting to see what's Miguel's plan from the get-go. What is he striving to f forward to? Why did he betray Karta? Why did he betray him as well? And a very interesting plot twist. I thought it'd be just an average battle between uh, Gaelio and Mika, and also with Miguel's involved in, as well as a third party, but Ayn is involved in this battle as well as a system within his Gundam frame where he can ignite uh, Ayn's brain using at least working together in some sort of ways, uh, Ayn's getting his revenge as well, where he can use Ayn's brain to activate the full capabilities of the Alia Vaina uh, system, where he can basically become become as strong as Barbatos and really ignite uh, the past battle from Edmonton as well within Mika. And so definitely a very, um, one of the few times we get to see Mika on the ropes and really struggle in a battle and very... Uh, interesting to see that as well. Um, definitely, uh, Vidar makes his escape before, uh, at least after, um, McGillis gets into, uh, the Gundam frame, Gundam Bale, and makes his proclamation that it's, this is the symbol of their coup, and that he is reigniting Galahor to what it used to be under, uh, Agni Kaeliu, and definitely got to see his backstory as well, very tragic backstory where he was, uh, abused, apart uh, from child trafficking, it seems like. Very uh, interesting backstory. Didn't really get too much into it, but definitely could see that he went through a lot of pain within his life, and he realized that power is the key. This is what he's been searching for this whole entire time, power. And he's finally able to get this power, and he's almost there after he defeats Galahor and takes over it from the ground up. And so a solid stretch of episodes here for um, Iron Blood Orphans. Great visuals in episode 42 uh, from the battle, especially with Mika uh, having a tail now for Barbatos. Uh, definitely a new uh, addition towards uh, the upgrade for Barbatsa is really making him more like a devil, especially the shot where he's about to uh, kill uh, Jastly, very much like a devil uh, in that visual there. So great visuals in the action. Uh, Gundam uh, the Gundam frame Bael uh, is very cool as well, and got to see a very awesome action sequence with uh, Ayn slash Gaelio uh, against Mika. Very awesome battle there, and so cannot wait for these two guys, Miguel and Gaelio, to have a, f um, a proper one-on-one -on -one battle, because definitely they're building up towards that. The ending really built that up. I don't really care what's going on with Tekadon. That's how much they built this up. I don't really care about what's going on with Mika and Orga or everyone else in Tekadon. I really want to see this battle. It's really effective uh, showing these two um, society forces, you can definitely see where Gaelio is coming from, wants his revenge against uh, Megillus. You know, it's understandable since you know, he felt like they were close. It did seem like they were close, but I guess they were not as close as Gaelio thought. You know, Megillus uh, has his own intentions, having power, leading uh, tech, uh, Galahorn to a brighter future, and Orgo is waiting uh, to help out Galahorn so he can become the king of Mars or everyone else, have a um, at least stand there and laugh at everyone else. That's what his uh, dream was when he told Mika uh, together with all that there. And so lots of interesting things to come. You know, Kudelia, I'm very curious to see more of her and her perspective, her side of the story as well. We also have Julieta. Um, definitely she's just having conversations with the other girl who seems to know everything about Vidar. And whether she'll use the um, the Isla Kishni uh, system uh, to help her cause and help her help out Rustle and his uh, pursuits against uh, the coup is very interesting as well because she wants to get stronger herself, but definitely looks like you have to use the Isla Kishni system in order to get stronger and really uh, few push your capabilities, but there is a cost towards that, towards the brain. We saw that Mika can barely walk right now, and so there are ways around it, using another per person's brain. It'd be pretty funny if Julieta used Eok's brain in order to help her cause. So that'd be very uh, interesting and funny at the same time. So for a rain for stretch of episodes, give me uh, three of them a four out of five. Again, great visuals throughout. Uh, very curious to see where the story goes from here, because uh, we're almost close uh, to the end of Iron Blood Orphans for Season 2, so definitely a lot of storylines going on with Julieta and Crudelia as some more subplots, uh, Galileo and Vigilis serving as the main plots, along with or Orga and Tekadon as well, and what their um, purpose is. You know, they're more support uh, right now for Megillus to help his coup and help his cause as well. Curious to see whether there'll be more power dynamics between Megillus and Orga, whether they'll actually have some sort of confrontation, because it's, I feel like it's building up for some, quite time, some time where Orga is sort of bequeathing his power towards uh, Megillus so he can help him out, but at the same time, Orga feels like he can get something out of it at the same time. Whether that's actually true or not, we'll have to wait and find out and all that. And so what are your thoughts on this? I'm so pretty thoughts in the comment section down below. Also, if it's a like, 
like, share, and subscribe as well. Thank you to episode review for episode 41, 42, and 43 of Mobile Suit Garden Iron Lord Orphans. Those episodes are Natural for a Human, Sentiments, and Revealed Intentions. Who's a nice day? Bye-bye.